Hello everyone. So Python is one of the emerging programming languages and according to the most recent figures, Python is the most used coding language for about 80% of developers. And the syntax of this high level programming language is simple to understand. And Python's large library system makes it a best choice for data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence projects. So hello learners. Welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel and today we will be doing photo manipulation using Python. But before we begin, if you love watching tech videos, subscribe to our channel, like the tutorial and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. And let us have a simple question to brush up on our knowledge. That would be a quiz question. And your question is, which one of the following has the highest precedence in the expression? And your options are, first option is division. Second is subtraction, third is power, and the fourth is parenthesis. Please answer in the comment section below and we'll update the correct answer in the pinned comment. You can pause the video, give it a thought, and answer in the comment section. And I have an insightful for you guys. So, if you're focused on building strong foundational skills for career growth, in that case, you can check out a free course to learn Python basics with a completion certification from ScaleUp by Simply Learn. And you can check this Python basics free skill up course with the link in the description below. And with here, we'll start our tutorial. And first, I will show you the pillow library with which we would be doing the photo manipulation. And in this video, we will learn how to modify and manipulate images using the Python pillow library. So, pillow library. It's a fork of the Python imaging library that is PIL and it allows us to do many different things to our images such as changing the file extension, resizing the image, cropping the image, changing colors of the image, blurring it and many more tasks. Pillow is extremely useful when you have multiple images you wish to process at once. For example, you can use Pillow to automatically create different size thumbnail of image you upload to your web server. To see, you could just go to the Pillow website. This is the official website. You could see the command to install the Pillow module that is pip install Pillow. You could simply copy it and paste in your command prompt and run it. The Pillow module would be installed for you. And if we go to its documentation, you can see all the properties here and the classes that are image file module image filter module image font module and image gram module so these are all the module or the classes that are in the pillow library so we would be using some of them and to start with first we'll create a folder and name it as photo manipulation using python and here we will open the command prompt and write the command code space period this will open my ideally that is I'm using the visual studio code you could use any ideally that you have hands on any Jupyter notebook spider you could use any and here we will create the file and name it as pic.py and to manipulate image we need an image so for that we can visit a website that is freepic.com and here i will do the manipulation on a mountain image so you could just search any keyword here. I will use this image. It will need your login. You can just log in into that and click on the download option. Okay, it directed me again. 
we'll click on download and download the free option okay now we'll go to the downloads and copy that and paste it in a same folder so that we don't need to write the path for the image and name it as picture and the extension of this image is jpg so now the first thing to start with our project is install the packages and import them to install the package we will write the command pip install pillow and press enter could see that it states that the requirement is already satisfied that is I have already installed the pillow library so I don't need to install it again you could just write the command to install that and if you get any error or any mistakes you could just comment down the video and we'll get to help you so starting with first we'll import the libraries so first we'll write from pil we'll import image that is the image module mm. we will be using image enhancer and the image color that's capital C yeah. image color so the first thing we will be doing is opening the image that is getting the image and after that we will do many manipulations with that so first we will create a variable and name it as image and here we will use the image module and its open function to open the image and in the inverted commas we will pass the name of the image else you have to pass the path where the image is stored as it has been stored in the same folder where we are processing with our project so here we just need to pass the name of the image we will save this and run it so it has opened the image and to get the image displayed we will just write image dot show that is the show function we will save it and run it again it takes time to open the image in your default image application so you could see the image here we will close it now you have seen how to show an image and we have opened the image so we'll comment this and move to another property that is resizing of the image so first we will comment down the heading that is resizing of the image and here first we will create a variable and name it as new size and in this we will write the size we want for our new image that would be 300 comma 300 that is the width and the height or the pixels and now we will create another variable that is image underscore resized and inside it we will use the variable image in which we have stored our image that is picture.jpg and use the resize function here and we'll pass the new size that is the size we want for our new image and here first we will save this image so it would be displayed here in the folder only <coughs> for that we'll use the variable in which we have stored the image that is 
image underscore resized and save it and inside we will pass the resized dot jpg that is the name with which we want to save the image the new image which we have resized and we'll also write a command that is print image underscore resized dot size so the size would be displayed and we would be confirming that we have code the resized image so we will save this and run it <coughs> so you could see in the output that it's showing 300 comma 300 that is the size of the new image and inside the folder you could see that we have the resize.jpg if we click on that so it's has been resized and its size is now 300 cross 300 now we have learned how to resize an image now moving on we will extract the information of a particular image so first we will comment this down and write a heading that would be image information and the first thing we would be extracting would be the size of the image for that we would simply write print and the size of the original image that is the picture.jpg and it's stored in the variable image for that we would write image dot size and the next thing we want is the file name for that we would write print image dot file name and the next thing we want is the format of the image and the next thing is the format description image dot format underscore description so we'll save it and run it <coughs> So we could see that the size is 5914,3943 that is the width and the height of the image and the second is the file name that is picture.jpg and the third is the format that is jpeg and the fourth is the format description that is jpeg and it has ISO 10918. Now we have seen how to extract the information for a particular image. Now. If you want to see how many images with a particular extension are stored in a folder, you could run a loop for that and extract all the name of the files. So I will show you how to do that. First, I will comment this down. And first, I will write the heading for that. That would be get all the images with same extension from a folder okay and for that we would be requiring the os module we'll import it import os and you need to install that module so for that you could visit the official website of the OS module that is pypi.org and the OS hyphen sys. So you could see this command that is pip install OS hyphen sys. You could just simply copy this command and paste it in your terminal and press enter. You would get this module installed in your system. Now moving back. <laughs> okay.
here we will run the loop that is for a variable f in os dot list directory and inside we'll pass period inverted commas semicolon and write a conditional statement if f ends with that is the extension dot jpg then we will print all the files now we'll save this and run it you could see that it has stated two files that is picture.jpg and the resize.jpg that are both the files that is present in a folder so now you have understood how to extract the files with the same extension from the folder moving on we'll see how to create a blank image and to create that first we will write the heading create a blank image okay so first we'll be creating a variable and name it as image underscore blank and here we'll use the image class and the new function and inside we would write rgba and pass the size for the image that is thousand comma six hundred and after that we would get this image shown that would be image underscore blank and that is the variable in which we are storing the new image and use the show function to get it displayed we'll save this and run it <coughs> you could see uh, my picture application has opened and this is the image that is the blank image and to get its information you could check it we will get the size of the image so first we will comment this down else it would take time to open that application again so we will get printed that is image underscore blank dot size we will save this and run it so you could see in the terminal that is the output 1000 comma 600 that is the size so you could <coughs> verify that your blank image has been created now we'll see how to rotate an image so first we'll comment this down and move ahead and write a heading that would be rotate an image So for that we will create a variable and name it as image underscore rotate and inside we will use the variable in which our original image is stored that is image and use the rotate function and inside we will pass the degrees to how many degrees we have to rotate this image I have passed 60 and after that I will get the image displayed that would be image underscore rotate that is the variable name in which we are storing the rotated image and use the show function to get it displayed we'll save this and run it so it will open the application and that is the default application in which i open the images so it has opened that you could see that the image is has been rotated by 60 degrees and you could see the corners they are not displayed properly they are cut it in the frame so to get these displayed in the frame and don't get the corners flopped out or cut out 
we would use a property that is expand and state it as true so we will save this and run it again so it takes time to open the application and show the image so we will just wait for that the application has opened and you could see that the image has been rotated by 60 degrees and it has been filled in the frame it's not out of the frame so there are other properties also for rotate as you can fill the color in the frame that is in the background of the image so i will tell you how to do that use fill color variable and inside we would use image color class on the module and use the get color function and inside we'll pass the color we want and the colors that are present in any image that is RGB red green blue and now I want this image to be shown that command is here only I have saved it and run it for you guys so it will take time to get the application open in which we will see the color you could see that the background is filled with the red color you could also change the color that is we will display green color here. in the background we'll save this and run it it takes time to open the application so it just opened and you can see that the background is filled with the green color now we have seen how to rotate an image now we'll see how to crop an image so we'll comment this down and move down and first we'll write the heading that is crop an image and here we will create a variable image underscore crop and inside we'll use the variable in which we have stored our original image that is image and use the crop function and inside we'll pass four parameters that is left x top y right x and bottom y i will write those parameters that is left x top y and right x and the bottom y okay so we'll pass some for this image first i will pass 0 comma 0 comma uh, 0 no not 0 be around 1500 and 1500 so i will save this and first get it displayed so for that i will write image underscore crop and use the show function to show that save this and run it for you guys And you can see that it has used 0, 0, and that is 1500, and downward it's 1150. Okay. Now we'll close that and we'll show you the original image. And we'll save this and run it again for you guys so 
so now i will show you this is the original image and this is the left x top y right x and the bottom y coordinates and what we have got is that is 0 0 1500 that is the right x and 1150 that is the bottom y okay so now you have seen how to crop an image now we will just comment it and now we will see how to flip an image so for that first we will write <coughs> the heading that is flip an image and for that first we will create a variable that would be image underscore first we will flip it in horizontal manner horizontal and inside we will use the variable in which we have stored the original image that is image and here we will use the transpose function transpose and inside we will use the image class and then the transpose function and now we will write the property to flip it from left to right so for that we would write in capital letters flip underscore left underscore right okay and now we will get this image displayed for that we will write image <coughs> underscore horizontal that is the name of the variable in which we have stored the flipped image and use the show function to get it displayed we will save this and run it you could see that the image has been flipped i will show you with respect to the original image that is you could see these rocky mountain and it is flipped from left to right and it's here now now we will see how to flip an image in vertical direction so for that we will create a variable and name it as image underscore vertical and inside we will use the variable image in which we have stored the original image and use the transpose function and inside we'll use the image class and then the transpose function and here we will write the command to flip it from top to bottom flip underscore top underscore bottom and we will get this image displayed now so we'll write its variable name that is image underscore vertical and save this and run it for you guys <coughs> so as you can see that this application to open this image it takes time so we'll just wait for that so it has opened this application and you can see that the image has been flipped I will open the original image so this is the original image and this is the flipped image so we have flipped the image from top to bottom and there's another property that is transpose only what it does it first flip the image from left to right and then top to bottom we can see that also so for that first we'll create a variable that would be image underscore transpose and here we would use the image variable in which we have stored our original image and the transpose function and inside we will use the image class then the trans 
transpose function and here the method would be transpose and that would be in the capital letters and we will get it displayed transpose load show so we will save this and run it for you guys It is taking time to open that application to show the image. We'll wait for that. So you could see that we'll open the original image. So first it has flipped it from left to right and then top to bottom. You could see that the Rocky Mountains are here. So first it has flipped it from this side and then top to bottom now uh, there are other options also that is rotate 90 degrees transverse transverse would be first it would flip it from right to left and then bottom to top so i will show you one more option that would be transverse and then we could move to another properties of below so we'll create a variable and name it as image underscore transverse and we will use the image variable in which we have stored the original image that would be image dot transpose function and inside we will call the image class and use the transpose function and then we'll write the transpose option uh, not transpose that would be the transverse transverse okay now to get it displayed we'll just get its variable with the show function that would be image underscore trans verse dot show we'll save this okay we have an error here trans pose okay now it's correct so we'll save this and run it it takes time to get that application started and display the image so the application has started and you could see that first it has rotated the image left to right that is first we have done that left to right and then from bottom to top no uh, first it has rotate the image right to left and then bottom to top okay now moving on we will see another option and that would be very fast i will copy this and paste this and we will rotate it by 90 degrees there are options to rotate it by 90 degree 80 degree uh, 180 degree or 200 degrees so for that we will just replace this with rotate underscore 90 okay and we'll get it displayed we'll save this and run it So it's taking time to open the application. We'll wait for that. Now the application has opened and you could see that the image has been rotated by 90 degrees. So you could use other options that would be rotate 180 degree, rotate 270 degree. But moving on, now we will move and now we'll see how to 
increase the size of the image so for that we will write the command increase the size that would not be the command that would be the heading increase the size of the image and in this first we will increase the size or we will just double the size so first we will create a variable and name it as scale factor and inside we will pass to that means we will just double the size of the image and now we will create another variable and name it as new and inside this variable We'll use the image variable in which our original image is stored and use the size function and take the value that is stored in the zeroth index and multiply it with the scale factor okay and now this is the height and now we will multiply the width and that is stored in the first index of the size image stored size at first index that is the width and then the height height would be stored in the first index now we will multiply this with scale factor okay now we will create another variable and name it as new image new underscore image and here we will just use the resize function to the original image that is stored in the image variable and <coughs> inside we will pass the variable in which we have get the new parameters of the size that is new now we will display the image that is the new underscore image and use the show function to display it so we will save this and run it So it will take time to open the application and get our image shown. so you could see this is the new image and to confirm that it has double its size we'll just write the command print and the name of the image that is new image and use the show function not show function the size function to get the size that should be doubled and we'll command this command so that it doesn't take much time we should only get the size as the output only and that would be in the terminal so you could see the size that is 11828 and 7886 and the original size was we will get the original size also printed here so for that we will write the command print and inside we will pass the variable name in which we have stored our original image that is picture.jpg and use the size function we will save this and run it
so you could see that okay. this is the original size of the image <clears throat> and this is the size of the image that we have multiplied by factor 2 that we have doubled the size of the image so now you have understood how to increase the size of the image now moving on we will use another class of the pillow library that would be the image enhance or the image enhance module in which we would be enhancing brightness doing grayscale to the image so first we have to import that uh, i have imported that okay so first thing we would be doing is converting the image to grayscale in other words we can say black and white that is storing a grayscale image instead of a multicolored image and it is more efficient and it's easier for a machine to understand it so for that we will create a variable that would be img and in that you write image dot convert and inside we will pass l and we will save this image so we have used the save there and we will pass the name of the image for which we want to get it stored we will name it as grayscaled dot jpg so we will save this and run it you would see that grayscale dot jpg has been stored here so you could see that the command has converted the image into black and white that it, it has applied the grayscale effect and this is our original image now moving on now we will add some light to our image except like if they are shadowed image we could add some light that is adding brightness with the help of the machine so for that we will write a command and first we will just comment this down <coughs> and first we will create an enhancer here for that we will write a command color underscore enhancer and here we will use image uh, that is the image enhance module and here we will use first the brightness and inside we will pass the name of the variable in which we have stored the original image Showing some error. Okay, now we'll use it downwards. So here we'll create another variable, and that would be enhanced image. And here we would name it as brightness enhancer. Okay. and we'll use this variable here that would be brightness enhancer and here we'll use the enhance function and inside we will pass to which extent we want to enhance the brightness so we'll just write 1.8 you could write any float values or integer values uh, what we have imported image enhance okay mm -hmm. and using it okay so we'll save this 
and run it. So we could see that we have written a wrong spanning of the module that is image enhance and we have imported that in the starting only. So now we'll use the show function to get the image displayed with the brightness enhancer. We have to set the value of the enhance here. That is, I will set it as 1.8 or in starting, I would set it as 6. And now I will use enhanced underscore image and use the show function to get the image displayed. I will save this and run it. So it takes time to open the application to display the image. So we'll wait for that. Uh, did we get any error? Image enhance. Okay, uh, I think this is the previous one. So we'll just run it again. Okay, it hasn't opened that and this is the image and just will close all the previous images and it has opened another image that is with the brightness and at an intensity of 6. So we will decrease the intensity and pass 1.8 as intensity and run it again. Now we're just waiting for the application to open the image and after that we can see the intensity of the brightness that we have set at 1.8. So you can see that the image has been enhanced with the brightness and that too with the intensity 1.8. Now we will see the color enhancement. In our original image for that we will create a variable that would be color underscore enhancer and inside we would use the module that is image enhance and use the color function and inside we will pass the variable in which we have stored the original image that is it would enhance the vibrance of the image and here we will pass the intensity and first we will change the variable in which we want the enhancement that is color underscore enhancer and we'll enhance with an intensity of 5 so we will save this and run it <coughs> so our application takes time to open up as I have to clear some RAM as the RAM management for my system has not been set up properly you could see that the color has been announced or there's a vibrance here So we have seen two options that is the brightness and the color. Now we'll see about contrast. So for that we will create a variable that would be contrast underscore enhancer and here we'll use the image 
enhance library and use the contrast function contrast and inside we'll pass the image variable in which we have stored our original image and inside this enhanced image variable we will change the variable name with contrast enhancer and we will set the enhancement by 5 only and to display that image okay that would be the same variable only we will save this and run it and after this contrast enhancement we will do sharpness enhancement So you could see that the contrast has been enhanced with an intensity of 5. Now moving on, we will shift to sharpness enhancer. And for that, we will create a variable and name it as sharpness underscore enhancer. And use the image enhance module. And its function that is sharpness and inside we will pass the variable that would be image in which we have stored our original image and in, a, in this variable that is enhanced image we will replace this contrast enhance our variable with sharpness enhancer and we'll enhance this with an intensity of six so we'll save this and run it and we have the show function we need that that is it will display the image with the sharpness so we are just waiting for a replication to open that image so you could see in this image that the sharpness has been increased if you want to see the original image i will show you that <laughs> so this is the original image and this is the image with the sharpness increased or enhanced with an intensity of 5. now we have seen how to enhance the image now we'll see how to use filters in our image so we'll just comment it and we'll see some basic filters that would be the blur filter contour filter and some edge filter so for that move downwards and we'll be using the image filter module and we have to import that and for that we'll write the command image filter and now we will start with some of the basic filters using filters and here we'll create a variable that would be image underscore blur and inside this we will use the variable image in which we have stored the original image and then the filter function and inside we'll pass or we'll use uh, the image filter library the module and its blur function and now we'll get this image displayed and for that we'll just write down the variable name that is image underscore blur and use the show option to get our image displayed we'll save this and run it so now you would be knowing that this application would take time to open that image so we'll wait for that <laughs> so 
so we could see that it has blurred the image now if you want i can just increase its intensity now we have seen how to blur the image or how to use the filter blur now we'll see some other filters that is contour for that we'll create a variable image underscore contour and here we'll use the variable image in which we have stored our original image and after that we'll use the filter and inside we'll use the image filter module and the function that is contour image filter dot contour in capital and now we'll get this displayed we'll use the show function for that we'll save this and run it so our default application that would be displaying this image and moving on we would be seeing some other filters that would be the detail filter and the edge enhancement filter so we have just used the contour filter you could see the effects of that now moving on we will use the detail filter for that we will create a variable that would be image underscore detail and inside we would use the image variable and the filter function and inside this function we will use image filter module and then the detail filter and after that we will get it displayed just replace the name of the variable save this and run it for you guys <coughs> so our application takes time to open this image application has started so here we have used the detail function detail filter you could see the details now moving on we will use other filters that is edge enhancement or edge enhance so for that we will create a variable that would be image underscore edge and here we'll use image dot filter and inside we would use image filter module and use the edge enhance filter so it would be in the capital letters only and here we will change the name of the variable with the show function save it and run it now we are waiting for our application to show that image and the effects of the filter that is it would enhance the edges of our image and we have one more filter that is edge enhance mode that is it would enhance the edges of the picture at a very much extent so this is the filter for edge enhance and now we'll see another filter that would be we'll change its name of the variable and name it as image underscore edge underscore more 
and inside we would use image variable and the filter function and inside we would use image filter module and the filter would be underscore move we will save this and okay it will carry out so we'll just change the name here we'll save this and run this and after this we'll see some other filters that would be emboss sharp smooth and this one more filter that would be smooth more so this is the edge that would be edge enhance more so moving on we'll see some other filters that is we'll start with uh, we have another filter for edges okay this is the output for the edge enhance mode we'll close this and we have another filter so some filters are not applied to this particular image as if your image has some particular edges it would enhance them more with this filter so here we would be using another filter that would be find edges so for that we'll create a variable image underscore find and we'll write image dot filter and inside we'll pass image filter module and inside we'll pass the filter name that is find underscore edges and here we'll change the name of the variable that is find we'll save this and run it Till then we could create a variable for another filter that would be emboss and for that would be right image dot filter and inside would we'll pass image filter and the emboss We'll save this. Okay, it won't. So first we'll complete this emboss filter. So we'll save this and run it. So it would show the output for the image underscore find variable. That is where we have used the filter that is the find underscore edges. So it will show the edges in a picture we are waiting for our application to open the image so in this you could see the edges and to get into the technicality of the edges you could search it on the web or like if you want to be of person who uses photoshop so you would be knowing that like what are these terms so now we have used the emboss filter we will just replace it in the show function that is image underscore emboss we will save this and run it for you guys so we will get the output for the emboss filter we will just wait for the output as our application is taking so much time to get output so this is the emboss filter moving on we have some other filters that is sharp so we'll just copy the command paste it and 
rename the variable as image underscore shop and inside the filter we'll just pass the filter name that is sharpen and here in the show function we'll also rename that is sharp we'll save this and run it So this is the output for the sharp filter. Now we will see another filter that is smooth. So for that we will just replace the variable. We will just renamed it and we will use the smooth filter. We will save this and we'll just change the name here that is smooth save it and run it So you could see the output that is for the smooth filter. Now we will see some rank filters. So first we will comment these filters. and for these rank filters we will create variable that would be image underscore min and that would use the image variable and the filter function and inside that will use image filter and the min filter function inside we will pass the size okay sorry we'll be using the period here size that would be equal to 5 and we will get it displayed We'll save this and run it. So this is the uh, so this is the output for the minimum rank filter and with the size equal to 5 and similarly we have other filters that is the median and the max for that we will just copy the command paste it and rename the variable as image underscore median and inside we will use filter and here we will use the median filter And in the show function, we'll just replace it. That would be image underscore median dot show. We'll save this and run it.
so we can see here that this is the output for the median filter so we'll close this now we will see how to combine some filters we combine two filters for that first we'll write the heading that would be combine filters and here we will create a variable image underscore emboss and here we will combine blur plus emboss two filters and for that we'll write image dot filter and inside we'll pass image filter dot create another variable image underscore emboss dot filter that is we would be image underscore emboss underscore blur we are using two filters that is emboss and blur so we'll create a variable for blur here that would be equal to image underscore emboss that is that has the emboss filter now we'll use filter here and inside this we'll use the image filter dot cn blur and we'll give its radius that is equal to 3 and we'll save this image image underscore ghost blur dot save and we'll name it as 99.png we'll change the extension also png that is emboss blur Emboss underscore blur. We'll save this and run it. You can see that 99.png is saved in a folder. We'll open this, and this image has two filters inside it that is emboss and blur so you could see this image now with that we have come to the end of this session and i have an insightful for you guys that is the python certification course that is if you are aiming to get certified in python programming and want to build a python software development career in that case you can check this python certification course by simply learn that will open the doors for the best career opportunities and to find the details of this python certification course you can check its link in the description box below and this could be the ideal solution to help you build your career in the right direction and i will also give you this visual studio code file that is the .py file in the description box you can download it from there and use that for your purposes and i hope this session was interesting and informative if you liked it please let us know in the comment section below and also do subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more from simply learn
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.